Hello, 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 hello. Hey guys, I am making this video to announce a couple of things that are going to be uh, new in Patreon coming for 2020. So first off, uh, 2019 has been a great learning year for me and this last two months have been even more so with all the challenges I was facing. Uh, so thank you, thank you, thank you for sticking around even through the slumps, that means a lot to me and uh, I am not going to let you down and I want to make sure that you are getting your money's worth and more than that. So first off, thank you for all the support up until now and thank you for the chats, the feedbacks and even the, uh, you know, the, the places where you tell me, hey, I learned this or I've, I've used this in my everyday and or, you know, the one-on-one the -on -one guys who tell me you've made tens of thousands of dollars using my advice. All of that is amazing to hear and uh, that's the reason I do this because I I have a I guess this weird feeling of satisfaction when I when I know that I'm affecting somebody else's life in a very positive way um, more more than anything else that's the reason I'm doing this and I hope you continue to provide me that feedback uh, good and bad that way we can improve this process and improve this little uh, treehouse that we're living in so um, without further ado I want to give you a view into what's coming up in the future so I am going to change up the tiers uh, Worry not, if you have been uh, doing the $10 tier all this time, uh, you will be automatically upgraded or grandfathered, as we used to call it in telecom. Um, and, and what that means is that you pay the same amount as new people will probably have to pay more for. Um, the reason for that is because I am now introducing uh, a newer system, a new tier, and plus, um, I'm, I'm capable now of producing more content. So the new tiers will be as follows. We will have a 15 to $20 tier, which will include uh, a bi-weekly business video and article. All of the, the business content is developed through all the years that I've, you know, messed up my business or brought it up or had successes plus the number of one-on-one -on -one students that I've had where we had a, uh, an opportunity to trial and test a whole bunch of different things and a whole bunch of different places. And this way, I have a, a bunch of concepts that I feel very confident teaching, uh, knowing that they work. So a lot of this lecture series will be based on uh, prior research and from my own business as well. And of course, I, I will be borrowing from a lot of the workshops and places that I've learned from because uh, I feel a lot of people have helped me and, and I'm uh, looking forward to paying that forward. So that is the, the big portion of the 15 to $20 tier. That is uh, the business article and video. The second part that's gonna be part of the $15 or 15 to $20 tier is wedding behind the scenes. So. I'm going to break down what's going to come in that business tier, but before I go into that, I want to kind of explain what I'm planning on doing with the behind the scenes uh, for the 2020 uh, year. So I am going to find a way to wear my GoPro and have enough batteries to do almost like a first person shooter style um, where you can see what's going on and do a much, much longer uh, edit or cut and then just throw the raw files up and so you guys can view the whole thing um, and, and enjoy it for what it is, unfiltered, uncensored, go nuts, just you know, don't share it anywhere, please. But yeah, that's my plan. I wanna do at least one a month from April to October for sure. And then it might get bi-monthly between November uh, over to March because in those times, I'm doing a lot more corporate, I'm doing a lot more marketing work, I'm doing a lot more portrait work. So I will turn gears and uh, show you some of the behind the scenes in that instead of uh, seeing more weddings. So hopefully that keeps you excited for the year to come in terms of the wedding behind the scenes part. Um, on top of that, we've got the, the business lecture series. So in that business lecture series, I am going to be covering a whole bunch of concepts from now till the end of the year. So I'm thinking it's going to be bi-weekly. So we've got 
26 weeks or so. Um, give or take, we've lost six or eight weeks now, so about 20 more weeks to go. So I've got about 20 concepts that I wanna cover in this. And uh, I'm gonna start at the top in the way I understand business and philosophy. So the first thing is my concept of ABC in business. So that's art, business, and creativity. Um, this is going to be about how all three of them interrelate, interconnect, and how some of it is exclusive. The others are not mutually exclusive. So I will, in a way, explain to you the overall general concept of the business we're in. Uh, a lot of us jump into photography from something else or we come into it and we just kind of run this self-fulfilling circle and we never kind of get a, a, a view of it from up top. Um, over the years, I managed to see several businesses come in and go. I've seen several businesses bloom and become something else. Um, I've seen friends go from, you know, just starting a photography business to owning like, land and other businesses and and so it's like it's amazing to see the type of growth you can have in different channels and different sectors only if you understand the concepts well so uh, by starting at the top and then looking at the general principle you can then decide which way you want to go and i think uh, that's a whole idea behind having a bird's eye view of your uh, business and understanding your intent so that's abc um, the next thing is going to be Stakeholders and when I say stakeholders, I am talking about people who are involved in the wedding uh, photography business that you are probably not recognizing as stakeholders right now. So you might think the bride and groom are the only two people you need to market to or you need to get money from. Um, the I want to sort of open your eyes to the possibility of having so many different pipes that you haven't kind of gone and opened yet. So this is going to be an exciting one because it's going to kind of pop in your head and say, hey, oh man, I didn't think of that, I didn't think of this. And so I wanna give you um, some, some idea of uh, what all, who are all these stakeholders are and, and um, you can pick and choose what opportunities you wanna hang on to. So that's stakeholders. The next lecture series is going to be on functional and emotional needs. Again, these are stuff that I've spoken to my one-on-one -on -one students, and now I'm moving on into, uh, these have been kind of built into concepts and packaged in a way that I can give them to you because I've had the conversations with many people before. So the functional and emotional needs of the stakeholders plus your business will allow you to create a better identity, a better voice, and be able to speak with clarity to clients and say, this is what I'm about, this is what I produce, and this is what you're buying. So that is going to be huge in your business, just being able to be uh, confident when you approach a client and say, this is my business, no one else does this. So that is about the, the functional and emotional needs section. So. The next big topic is uh, one that kind of changed my perspective of marketing, and that is story brand. And so if you haven't read the book, I recommend highly, highly, highly that you read story brand. Once you read it, take it in and see how it can relate to your business. So I've taken story brand, I've taken a bunch of other marketing concepts and sort of meshed it all together to come up with my own little um, bag of tricks of marketing, if you will. So this entire lecture will be around marketing and, and how to go about marketing and what stages you should be uh, thinking in terms of marketing as well. So uh, that is story brand. The next big thing is on pricing. Of course, this is going to be a highly uh, contested or, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping to get like a, a big discussion going around this idea of pricing and kind of see where you are uh, in terms of that and mentally and, uh, and, and introduce a few concepts to you about thinking about profit and pricing. So a lot of, I guess, Things that opened my eyes where I sat down in, in front of a class or in front of my mentor or, uh, you know, 
workshop or something and I went, holy shit, I didn't know that. I now want to turn around and share with you. So a lot of that is about money and about pricing and about uh, the things that we as photographers don't really think about. Those are the things that I want to talk about. So next up is lead management and lead management is so important because a, a a tight lead management leads to better conversion and a better conversion means more money in your pocket. More money in your pocket means you work less and you can probably charge more and a, and a lot of other things. So I think uh, I've spoken a little bit about lead management in the past, but I think I can revamp that and talk to you a little bit more about new concepts that I've learned. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Okay, so next up, uh, do, 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 ooh. First meeting, oh my God. So one of the things that I do in my meetings is that I don't show any pictures, I don't carry an album, I don't even bring out my laptop. My meeting happens as if I'm just kind of talking to people. Um, and this whole idea of a rapport and connection, a deeper connection, um, and then letting them tell you more, uh, there's a couple of tricks that I use to get them to tell me more about themselves that I will share with you and hopefully you know you use it and then you come back and tell me how amazing it was for you so I can't wait to do that um, a lot of my clients at the end of a meeting go wow I wasn't expecting this I didn't expect uh, this to be what I get from a photographer meeting so I'm looking forward to sharing those with you hopefully hopefully uh, don't quote me on this maybe I can record one live and and post it but We'll see. I, I haven't really found anyone who's game for it, but I don't want to secret camera anybody, but we'll see. Anyway, next up, customer flow. And what I mean by customer flow or client workflow is two part. One, what are you doing? Two, how are you keeping communication with the client throughout the process? So from day one to delivery and then after delivery, what's going on? Because this flow is important for the other things that we're going to talk about, which is upselling albums and print sales and in-person sales. All of these things depend a lot on how you handle customer flow. So a lot of times you might read up on the internet, you know, oh, this is how I sell an, uh, an album. This is how I sell a print. Or you might even buy pick time and think, oh yeah, I'm just going to set up my gallery online and, and let people just buy shit on 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 the internet and then you're like sitting back and going, oh, I wonder why no one's buying it. Well, because your flow and the way you're managing your client hasn't set up in a way that they are prepared to buy. So a lot of the conversation around customer flow is to set them up in a way that they know that when it is time to buy and when is it time to collaborate and work with you. So that's an entire conversation around customer flow. After that, we'll talk a lot about upselling and how to do it in a way that it doesn't seem so salesy, it doesn't seem so cringy, um, and where you're not just going, oh, you can buy the, you know, this size for this much and this size for this much. Instead, you move into more of a, a problem-solving approach, but not like the older thought process of problem-solving, but a more what's the word, an emotional way of problem solving because people who buy with emotion buy more, buy more expensive things, uh, spend more. So that's what you want to do. You don't want to sell from a, a logical state. It just doesn't work. Anyway, a lot of the conversation around upselling will happen in that time. Um, next is albums. Okay, so I sell albums. I'm okay at it, I think. Uh, but my friends in the UK do an incredible job. So I'm just hoping to have a conversation with a couple of my buddies who do this and kick ass in it and uh, share with you how they do it. And of course, give you my perspective of how it could or could not work in our market. Um, so that would be a, a very good conversation and I'm hoping that you join into that one and uh, we can have a feedback loop and, and have a, a, a long conversation with that as well. So next up is print sales and in-person sales. So this is a, a an entire 
or what would you call it, an entire school of thought around photography. So there are guys who just simply make money by doing in-person sales. Their session fees are so low, but then they have these ideas of, you know, like just showing up to their uh, studio and then you end up buying prints. So Sue Bryce, for example, uh, is a huge proponent of in-person in sales. Uh, there's a bunch of other people that I've learned from and, and I've done uh, workshops with that I think I can kind of distill all of those ideas and bring it to the South Asian market and share it with you. So that's in-person sales. Next is running email campaigns. So I've just recently started, I've been spending the last like maybe eight months learning it um, and just kind of sitting with my uh, people that are teaching me the stuff and figuring it out. So I think in about six to eight months, I'll be ready to talk to you about it. So that's why it's here. Um, but Hopefully it pans out really well and, and I will share my experience either way with you. Uh, the next step is the 100 client theory. So this is a really, really big one for me because I think a lot of my business, a lot of my marketing, a lot of my organic growth has happened because of this. Um, and so I want, I've never really recognized it as such and I wish I did because I would have treated my clients better in the past. Um, so a lot of learning from my mistakes will happen in this uh, lecture, but also I want to now that I have the clarity I kind of want to teach you the way I would go back and teach myself a few years ago if I've recognized this then so hopefully it will be helpful for you as well. So next up So how many is that let's like one two three four five six seven nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen 16 things so far. So the next bunch of stuff will be a theoretical conversation around shooting. And when I say theoretical, what I mean by that is your mindset, um, the way you approach it, your intention, what you plan on doing, all of that has to do with how you will approach the day when you're shooting it. So we'll break down the day We'll talk about it. We'll talk about how to approach it, why you should do certain things and not others, um, why you should kind of sort of simplify and algorithmize, I mean, shoot with an algorithm in your head uh, instead of trying to get too crazy and have mental conversations. Um, and this is something that was clarified to me because I attended two man's workshop and I realized that they're all work, no gimmick. It's just work. So what I mean by that is how do they get to that mindset of just being able to push through and get shit done? Well, that's what we're going to talk about when we're talking about shooting the wedding. So um, it has a lot to do with, you know, the concepts that I've learned over the years. So like LMC, if you don't know what that is, we'll talk about it. Uh, LEM, we'll talk about it. There's a video with um, that you'll see with Jide uh, that I've done in the past where you can learn about LEMs. Um, and then there's different hats that you can wear during the day uh, in terms of what you can do. So all of these little different, different techniques and tips I will share with you and hopefully they will help you as well. So that is the lectures that will happen from now, from now till I would say the end of the year and beyond. Um, so yeah, I am, as you can tell, I'm, I'm pretty stoked for this. I want to get your feedback on this and I want to know what you're excited for. Uh, what is it that you want to hear more about? Um, tell me and I will produce this for you. Okay. So next up. So this is the, 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 the top tier content, right? So the next tier, which is going to be a $10 tier is where I will do once a month, the shitty location shoot. The only reason I'm going to do this is because it is very, uh, rewarding for me to do something super challenging like this and I want to do like a 30 minute video but then post the 10 minutes onto YouTube my goal is to kind of get on YouTube this year but I think this will be a fun way of getting on there and doing something a little bit different from others one of the things that I can do that I find that nobody else is doing online right now is make epic shit in shitty places so I want to continuously push that and push that to a point where people say, that's the guy who does that, right? So um, you'll see that at least once a month. 
And of course, if you are part of the $15 tier, you'll get access to the $10 tier. And you being on my $10 tier now um, will have access to all of this all of the time. So thank you. Anyway, so that is going to be the main thing with the $10 tier. And then the next one is going to be a bi-monthly video of the portrait sessions that I'll be doing in studio here. So <clears throat> I've just built a little studio wall here and I have a bunch of uh, backdrops and I've got this big light here. So I wanna use all of that and do a bunch of portraits over the year. So those will also get behind the scenes footage up onto Patreon. So that's the $10 one. And then once in a while, maybe four or five times over the year, I'll do a monthly critique and then maybe a monthly article and uh, talk a little bit about gear, talk about cameras, uh, anything else that you want me to talk about. We will talk more about it, but I think this is kind of the meat that I'm uh, looking forward to sharing with you. And I am so happy to have sat down and wrote all of this out and, and just kind of done all of the outlines and, and have about five of these scripted out so far. So I can't wait, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to this. So let me know what you think and uh, we'll kind of go from there. Okay. All right. Have a good one. I will talk to you soon. Bye.